Hello, welcome to the Babbles Travelling Yarns podcast. My name is Grace. I am known as Vanna Willemiel on Instagram. I'm also as Babbles Yarns on Instagram and that's kind of my small little business where I dye yarn, organise retreats and um, kind of generally try to start having a little yarny business. Um, <laughs> I'm mainly on my other channel though, Val Vanna Willemiel. That's my personal channel. That's my podcast channel. And you don't need to see my printer. So that's Fine. Uh, it is the 14th of April. It's been two weeks since my last podcast, which is grand because my last, it wasn't really a podcast, it was a whole video from Edinburgh Yarn Festival. I kind of um, almost burnt myself out doing all those videos, but I really enjoy, I love doing the Edinburgh videos, they're the best. And I got engaged, so that's really nice. And for those who want to see the ring a little closer, I don't know, you probably can't see it because it won't do the thing, but it's really pretty, yay. And um, yeah, we're kind of into a little bit of um, wedding planning now and it's a little bit mad. Um, yeah, and that's all I'm gonna say about that. <laughs> so um, I've got a lot to talk about. I've got a lot of finished objects that I haven't really had a chance to properly talk about, I don't think. And I've got a few winners. So let's do the prize winners from the Cable Cow. <gasps> so it was the Cable Make Along, Cable Knit Along, Cable Make Along. And um, I was hosting it with Marsha of Fairy Little and Akira of the Knitting Annihilator podcast. And we had a great time. We did it for two months and we had loads of lovely engagement. It was really, really lovely to get people into cabling. So I've got some winners and let's crack on with them shall we so instagram um i pulled from the cable cow hash cable cow 2019 hashtag and the winner was ticket to knit and she wins this beautiful skein of olin this is on her um, sock light base in the secret heart colorway and that is olin um which is jess which is hand dyed in ireland olin actually means or olin depending on which part of the country you're in um means wool so in Irish. Um, yeah, so that is yours. Take it to knit. So get in contact with me on Instagram and send me your address so I can send it out to you. Uh, the next person is from the whip thread and this is going to Morose Mermaid 9, which is Lauren from the Sussex UK. And <gasps> so uh, these beautiful ladies, Lily Pond Yarns, I called them something the wrong thing before. I apologize so much. Um, but Lily Pond Yarns is um, a lovely collection of two friends, um, sisters, friends I think, but they gave me a lovely prize at Edinburgh Yarn Festival and they said I could keep one and then I can give away one. But I think they look so beautiful together. Aren't they beautiful together? Look at this kind of chartreuse green. And then some stitch markers and they're all packaged so nicely. I couldn't split them up. They're too pretty. They're absolutely gorgeous. So, so one is called pistachio and this is called a lot of latte. And they go so well together because they've got this kind of blue, or like a brown tinge down here, like the pistachio green. I think they're so pretty together. I can't split them up, they're too nice. So um, one is the Superwash Merino Nylon 8020 and the other one is a BFL and Bamboo Base. Oh, beautiful, 8020 again. And um, so they're both the same weight, 100 grams, 365 meters, hand dyed with love, gentle wash, dry flat. So that is going to Morose Mermaid Lauren in Sussex in the UK. So yay, send me your address. Send me your details, I'll send those out. And then the final winner. The final winner is going to get this stunning bag by Deborah Makes Things on Etsy. It is the handmade, hand dyed, plant dyed with avocado skins and um, flowers from her local lake. And this gorgeous, gorgeous cotton tape kind of cotton bags. It's an absolutely great festival bag. And um, yeah, if you're going to a festival, you can just hide all of your arms. It's a fantastic tote bag, really good, but it's more than a tote bag. It's such a fab, fab bag, really, really well designed. So 
this who's the winner who's the winner so it has to be the it has it had to be the fo thread and when i pulled out the random random number and i looked it up i was like omg this fo was stunning it was the rose cardigan by woolly mcfluff and she actually um knitted it out of olin yarn which is all very very nice so this is your prize i'm also going to include a bar of soap from olin this is a bar of wool wash from olin and um to help you keep all of your nice things nice and fresh and clean so that is going in with the bag as well yay so that's all the winners please get in contact with me and we'll sort something out i'll, I'll post these out as soon as i can Put them nice and safe. Beautiful, beautiful, lovely. Oh, so nice. Right. So, what should we talk about? I've got so much to talk about. First off, first thing I finished. Oh no. Not this. The first thing I finished, the most, like, let's go in order of finishing. This was a, um, the piece that I had woven. So this is my woven um, t-shirt. Is that the swear? Is it? Yes. My woven woven t-shirt, which I kind of invented up the pattern for, out of hand spun yarn in a twill, my first ever twill attempt. I should be wearing it really, shouldn't I? But um, yes, so this was one big long piece of fabric and I cut it into six pieces, three for the front, and then three for the back. I'm going to turn it inside out so you can see how I actually constructed it. The, the front one here was a slightly shorter length. I think I should have done it even shorter again. So this was how I managed to do it. So I interfaced it with a black woven interfacing just here you can see it's ironed on and then on the edges I um, I sewed um, zigzag stitch so I folded it down in front and sewed it with zigzag stitch just there for the neckline I could have gone down lower on that one it is a bit tight on the neck for the shoulders I this is sewn at an angle just to allow a little bit of a slope so that's it going down the shoulders just there, just to allow a little bit of a slope. And then the underarms I had a little bit of fiddling with. I actually decided to cut the selvage and fold it back in underneath so that it wasn't pulling weirdly. It was pulling weirdly and it wasn't sitting quite right on my arm, on my underarm. So yes, so that's what I decided to do. Um. It was, if because if I had just done a box, like sewn it here, it was very, very boxy and it wasn't really suiting me. Um, it's quite cropped. It turned out quite cropped in the end. I didn't have as much as I thought. I'll pop it on so you can see. I didn't have as much as I thought I would on the length, which tells me, see how difficult it is to get on. <laughs> this is the longest way to put it on. That's it. There you go can't do it with glasses have to take off the glasses right so this is what it looks like I'll stand up so you can see so it hits me right my waist is here so it hits me about two or three maybe at two inches just below my natural waist which feels quite and I did leave a little little gap I feel like I should have left a bit more of a gap there but I had it sewn before I realized that I should have done that um I like these like lines they're quite nice and I mean I could have princess seamed it a little bit maybe I don't know how to do that really but I do like the 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 fit of it. I still have a huge amount of fabric under here. I don't really know how to, how to fix that. Um, I suppose if I'd kept it out boxy, it really looks very boxy because this fabric itself is actually really dense. It's really dense. Like there's a good, this thickness in there because it's a twill. It is a thicker density and I didn't, I didn't anticipate that when I was planning this garment. 
um yeah so it's a bit of an experiment lots of things to learn more on the neckline i was thinking about cutting it down here and just doing a little eye loop thing you know the way they they do that just to give a little bit of space i'm starting to realize with garments that i'm spinning and then weaving that why why certain elements of clothing were put in place like that little uh, that little gap which i never liked before i know now that that's because it it's there because to get the head out <laughs> but yeah i think it looks quite good i'm wearing my uh slow wardrobe dress and this kind of length of it i'm just having my that's my little belt i'll tuck that in underneath so allows for pocket access it's quite warm but I feel like I wouldn't wear this generally. Well, I could wear this generally out and about. I've only really worn it to show off. <laughs> but I suppose that's why we, we make things. I mean, I made the um, the piece that um, the cardigan, cardigan. Um, I only really wear that to festivals and when I'm spinning and I'm at spinning days. Um, this feels a little bit more kind of like armour. <laughs> wingy here I'm not sure it's a, it was a really interesting experiment and it's a really pretty color so I'm happy with it yay it's done and it's a really interesting um a kind of way to learn about clothing and why they why they're like that why the designs are like that um yeah yeah I'll leave it on now because I'm kind of cold it's cold today and the second piece I finished was this piece. I had to finish this, of course, before I went to Edinburgh. So I was literally up until like midnight the night before we left sewing this together. And then I finished this. This is the Cable Crush Cowl by Carl Pierre. And this is the, um, the Cable Crush Cowl. It served me so well on all the mountains. It's a lovely shape, lovely size. I added... I didn't do the ribbed border so the ribbing looks like this so it kind of stands up quite close but it sucks in I didn't I decided not to do that I just went straight in and that's part of the pattern as well you, you have an option and what I did was then I just tucked it underneath and it just folds over like that if you did a tubular bind off or something it would work as well but on the bottom I did an eye cord which allows it to flare out a little bit and kind of settle on your on your shoulder blades but um yeah I love this it's really cozy and really nice and did me very well up in up Arthur's seat twice two times and this was knit out of the beautiful ocean by the sea yarn this was her um BF oh I found her I found the label whoop whoop her beautiful label this is the gorgeous label. So this is Ocean by the Sea BFL um, Nip and Fleck Base Aran, 166 meters per 100 grams. And this is the Mint Sans Chip colorway. Beautiful, thank you Ocean. And I met her at uh, Edinburgh where she was sitting way on the inside of the table and I was like, I'm shy. So I'll just be like, hi, look, I made this. Yay, bye, okay, bye. She got a couple of pictures and she sent them to me. Very, very sweet. But I wish I'd gotten a picture with her. But anyway, whatever. So then what I was knitting on for the rest of the time was another cowl. Mad about cowls. Mad about these cowls, lads. So I made this cowl, which was the shifty cowl. So I, this is the final shift. It is out of all of my hand spun from Pretty Funky Fibre. I got her, I, she made up some bats for me and I spun it up and I used five, five bats, which are about 50 grams each. And they were all three plied, which made them kind of a heavy worsted. And I used all five. I literally was down to the brink with these last little bits. I was like, Urgh. I was switching it up every so often um, just to kind of see if I could get like an interesting fade with colours and stuff. So this green was with the light blue, but it's actually really intense down here where it's kind of faded here. It's interesting. Um, I didn't follow colour progression. I started off and then I just went from the diagram and I kind of just did whatever I wanted, which is kind of funny. But I think it worked out really nice and it looks really nice on as well. 
They all look like pig sayers. If anyone knows who pig sayers is, you went to school in Ireland in 1980. I didn't. She was gone by the time I went to school, but everybody knows about her all the same. So this is my beautiful cowl. It's so pretty. And discovering new things every day. Um, who is it? Barry and Handmaid has this new uh, little hat dana. It's a bandana that can also turn into a hat. And I love it. And I want 70 million of them. I want all of them. I do. I want all of them, all of them, all of them, all the time. Hang on. Oh no, I have to. I have to turn it around the other way, actually. But they're. It's. It's. Um. It's a really lovely design. I think I need to put it on like this. Yeah. Like this. And then up like this. It's a bat. <laughs> So I want to I want to get hers because she has it kind of much. This is huge, obviously. I feel very Eastern European, you know, style. But this is so comfy. The hair is out of my face. Not to think about it. Amazing, because I've got a lot of it. And it's everywhere. So I really want to make a lighter one out of uh, that design. She's got this lovely cable down the back, and there's a little tassel. It's so cute. So yeah. And it, it's a different design to the way this is, but it's kind of like a, a similar kind of a triangle thing, construction. I don't know. I actually don't know. That's why I'm buying the pattern because I need 70 hundred. I told her, I was like, I need all of them right now. You know, anyway. So that, those are all my finished objects and I've only really been knitting on one other thing at the moment. It is in my cottage number nine bag, oh, which is going to be at my retreat next weekend. Oh my God, six days. So Terry's making up some bags for me, her wonderful patented, I don't know if they're patented, but they are her idea. The drawstring handbag. It's amazing, amazing. Nothing's like tilting or falling out or anything, amazing. And then, I, and then I ruin everything by doing this. Yes, much better. So this is the beautiful, beautiful Enchanté sweater by Atelier Emily. And it is being, yay, oh, it's so pretty. Oh, it's coming up now. I'm freaking out that I don't have enough. So I am knitting it out of my own hand dyed yarn in a base that I was trialing at the start, but I got it from a friend of mine, Apple Oak Fiberworks, who is also going to be at uh, Babel's Retreat, by the way. All plant dyed yarns, really interesting bases. This one is a Raimi, which is a nettle base. It's so nice. It's mixed with a, a wool as well, but I think it's 20% Raimi and maybe some silk. Anyway, it's gorgeous. So this is in my mist colorway, which is a really light green, greeny gray, really, really delicate pastel. And I am knitting it into this beautiful pattern. Now this, um, so this is two, it's basically two fingering weight yarns, which comes up to be about a worsted weight. In the pattern, she knits a, um, she knits with a DK weight and a skein of, and, a, and a, a strand of mohair, which brings it up to a worsted weight, I believe, I believe, something like that. Anyway, I know my gauge matched and that was it. So I went with it. So this is the pattern. It's a really lovely, large kind of lace pattern. It's knitting up really quickly. I'm, I don't have to look at the pattern anymore. It's really simple. Oh, this is my little, stitch marker from Mrs. U Makes. She's based in London. She's a stitch marker designer in London. And um, she has a podcast as well, actually, Mrs. U Makes. She does like a monthly rundowns, I believe. And um, yeah, so it's coming up lovely. What needles am I using? So I'm doing my um, two different size needle method for doing garments in the round. It makes it go a lot faster. So what I'm doing is, what I do is, 
I knit with the right hand side so you're always making stitches with the right hand side for me I don't know how anybody else does it the opposite way unless you're knitting back I don't know anyway sorry I am making my stitches with my right hand this is my right hand left for you right for me um, the needle on my right hand side is the larger needle it is the needle that I used in the gauge swatch to get gauge the needle in my left hand side is just holding stitches so I am getting them off that needle. The needles are being, the, the needle in the right hand side is making the size of stitch I want. The left hand side is just a carrier and I'm just pushing needles, you know, I'm making it. So this needle does not have to be the same size. If you've got an interchangeable tip set, you can put this down a couple of sizes and it makes the needle, this, the the, if you're a tight knitter especially, it'll speed up your knitting because it takes a lot less effort to get the stitch off that needle if it's smaller because the need the stitches are being made on a larger needle which means that they're going to be looser on a smaller needle. Get it? Am I, am I over complicating this? Anyway, I know a lot of people do this but I thought I'd say it again just in case people don't. So um, yeah, it's super fast. It makes it really fast. What I also do if I've got a lot of stitches on like the body of a garment, I also do a, I use a smaller, a smaller cable because it tends to um, just make it a lot easier um, that you don't have to bunch up your, this was, this is a 24 inch yeah, I'm using the small tips of Haya Haya's and this is Haya Haya cable 24 inch. So I've got a 24 inch circumference on around here. And yeah, it's working totes fine. Is that inches or centimeters? One second. Yeah, inches. Okay. So probably around 100 centimeters? No, less than that. 60 centimeters, I'd say. 60 centimeters. Anyway, small. I could go smaller than this again because there's lots of space here. You know, I could really bunch it up. And um, I just find that I'm not constantly pulling the stitches around and around and around. Just kind of hints and tips for knitting sweaters. Oh, I've done it again. I need to go back. I shouldn't have done that. I, I knew I was at a mistake and I just picked it up and I started knitting. I'm going to go back now before I forget. Anyway. So... What else is going on? This is literally all I've been knitting on because there's been a lot going on in my life. Um, uh, so if you're not interested in anything else. Oh, I'm just going to talk a little bit about um, my Babbles retreat, which is happening this weekend. So it's Sunday now. So it's next weekend coming. So the following weekend. It's happening on um, from the 19th, which is the Friday, to the Monday, which is actually it's the Easter if you celebrate Easter, it's the Easter weekend. Um, I am hosting it over that weekend because it's a lovely long weekend for people who work um, and um, it filled up instantly pretty much. But there is a day which uh, is open to the public. It is Saturday, we're having a maker's market and there's also going to be a few talks by entrepreneurs in the wool world. Um, one of them is called, one of them is Sandra, uh, Sandra King from the Irish Fibre Crafters. She's going to talk a little bit about what Irish Fibres is about, what inspired it and um, what's available there. And then the other talk we're going to have is about the um, West Cork Yarn Festival. Annie, who is the Sixpence Moon, who's vending at my little tiny market. She's also going to be there. So I asked her, listen, do you want to talk about what's going on at your festival on the 25th of May? So maybe you might be interested in going there. So, yes, it's going to be quite nice yeah so that is um that is the day there's also going to be a lot of weaving weaving um and spinning available on the day i'm going to have loads of drop spindles and bits and bobs it's going to be quite casual lunch will be available to buy from the bar and there's going to be drinks and everything available there uh, so where is it it is in ballyglass house which is about five to ten minutes outside tipperary town it's about five to ten actually it's five minutes from tip town it's about 10 minutes from at Limerick Junction where you can get a train from Cork or Dublin um, every hour 
every hour on the hour. They, I, I'm not sure if it's on the hour. It's every hour there's a train from Dublin and Cork and they drop people off uh, to change trains to go into Limerick. And that's why it's called Limerick Junction, but it's actually in Tipperary. How to make things complicated? Come to Ireland. Um, <laughs> but you can get a taxi from the train station. It costs you about, about 12, 10 euros or maybe, maybe less. I think it's seven euros, something like that. And um, yeah, you're more than welcome to come for the day. Um, it's open from about 11 o'clock. Um, we're going to be having like a lazy breakfast at like nine, um, a chill out session. And I'm going to be setting up the market from about 11. The mar the, and then the market is going to be open from 12 until two. Um, you can have your lunch and then the the talks will be at about three o'clock, I'd say, uh, about 3 p.m. So you um, you don't have to book. You can come on the day. Um, I This year I'm doing something different. I And this is weirdly difficult for me, mm, but I've decided to charge for the open day. It's five euros entry and you can pay on the website just down below. You can actually pay on the website if you want to book your ticket and not have to worry about anything. So I'll have your name on a list um, or you can also pay on the day um, and it will be cash uh, to pay on the day. So yeah, so I've decided to do that because it, it actually takes a lot more work than I'm willing to admit. <laughs> to uh, to host uh, an event, to run an event. And the open day as well is the busiest part, is the busiest day. Um, I've organized all the vendors, I've organized um, the advertising, I've organized talking about it and um, working with the working with the venue on it. And um, I wasn't charging anything for the first two, but I decided that the amount of time that goes into the website, the Facebook and the actual day itself, um, that um, putting a nominal charge on entry during that day is not unreasonable. That's really difficult for me to admit. But I thought, you know what, try it and see and see if it works. <laughs> and so far we do have a number of people really interested. So there is a limit on the tickets uh, because it is a small event. So um, yeah, if you're interested, I would say book uh, book online and if you're if you're definitely coming down on the Saturday the 20th of April um, just in case because there there will be a limit it, the the place is only so big so it can't take too many people so if you're interested please do book um, if uh, I'd say I'd say it will be okay you know to come on the day um, but you might be restricted from coming in until we've got some uh, some people there might be a kind of a number a, con a number control situation um so yeah i would advise booking online on my website which is www.babblestravelingyarns.com and you can pay through that and that'll be no problem you don't have to print off anything i'll have all the names so yeah it's really exciting so Yes, I'm really excited. I can't wait to see everybody. We've got a lovely event planned this this year. Um, just really chilled as usual. I'm just really excited. Um, I um, I was out walking today actually, and I'm going to get. We always weave a small little scarf, a small little tapestry, and I found these lovely branches. Oh, that broke. Well, I found this lovely branch. <laughs> And I'm going to be um, displaying them. So we're. Uh, my plan is to ask everybody to contribute a little bit of weaving into the into the tapestry every year, and then just grow them and and um, have little a little a little memory of everybody that's ever been to the retreats, which is quite cute, isn't it? <laughs> so yeah. I'm really excited. So who are we going to have at the event? We are going to have uh, Bear and Sheep's Clothing. She's coming down uh, with her beautiful yarn. Townhouse Yarns is coming with, uh, well, she's going to be, we're going to be collecting some wool. They can't come on the day, but we are going to have some of their lovely, um, some of their lovely uh, yarn there for sale. So pretty, Jenny's beautiful yarn. Um, Oh, Apple Oak Fibre Works, who is naturally dyed. So this is some of her work just here. This is naturally dyed with onion skins and local flowers. 
so pretty. She's just up in Scarif. The Irish Fibre Crafters are coming down with hand spun yarn and possibly their wheels for a little bit of demonstrating and just kind of chilling out and having fun. Um, who else? So we've got my yarn, Babbles Yarns, is going to be on happening. So that's going to be there. I've been dyeing up a storm and I've also been dyeing... Um, I've also been dyeing up some yarn um, inspired by the Galti Mountains on a walk that I did. I took loads of photos and some of the yarn is just the memories of those fo photos and the colours inspired from those photos, which are really quite special to me. So I'm also going to have some some oh, bags from Terry. She's going to be there. Lilavala Yarns also has hand-dyed yarn and bags as well, hand-sewn bags. She's going to see sewing up loads at the moment um who else annie from moon and sixpence she's going to be there with her yarn it was beautiful last year really really lovely stuff and um i should have a list i have a list it's on my phone that's no good um we have the stunning mr beans mugs and also some um, knitted mugs and sweater mugs from Remembrances Pottery. They're the only ones available in Europe. Europe. The continent of Europe. Anywhere, actually anywhere outside of um, America and Canada, I believe. The United States and Canada. I'm the only one that has that. Maybe, I don't know. Okay. It's really exciting, it's really exciting. So they're going to be there. Get your hot little hands on those. Uh, we've also got some, uh, one of uh, one of the people that are staying actually works with Enable Ireland and she does um, pottery, hand-built pottery with um, a, a collection of people who have physical and mental disabilities. So a lot of the stuff that they're making, actually I have a sample. I bought one when I was at uh, a retreat previously. So this is a sample of their hand-built their hand -built yarn bowls. So you can see the hand building element down here. I love this. I love that. And uh, the glaze then inside. And they also are bringing, she's also bringing down these lovely little stitch marker holders. Just little kind of, um, little, uh, I don't know what you call them, little plates, tiny little plates tiny little things but they're, I'm really excited about these they're coming up so pretty um what else and then of course we have our fiber contingent which is pretty funky fiber so she's coming down with some of her hand dyed yarns her bats and her Rolex and a few extra bits maybe I'm so excited to get more bats I am obsessed so that this was some of pretty funky fibers work so it's going to be a lovely little fair, really, really nice, kind of um, hand-picked. <laughs> I'm trying to spread it around every year. I've got a couple of interesting things going on uh, and I've got ideas for next one, for the next one in October. And 2020 is going to be a very interesting year for the retreat. Very interesting. Let me just leave it at that. But uh, yeah, so if you're interested, um, do head over. We're going to be doing uh, another, uh, I'm going to be doing another little vlog on the day, but you're more than welcome to come along for the day and um, join us for fun times. So I'm going to leave it at that. I'm wrecked. I'm so tired. I've been working quite a lot. I had an awful week end last weekend uh, and I'm still not recovered from work. Oh, it's the worst. Anyway, it is done now. And um, yeah, so I hope you've had a lovely day and lovely two weeks since I last saw you. And I hope uh, I'll see you again soon. Bye.